live today from the streets of Los Angeles. That's right. And I can use my hands. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I really appreciate you watching my show. Whoever watches it. Doesn't matter. We are living the slack life here in Los Angeles. That's right. It's going to be a loud one. That's all right. Uh, I got to do my video cast outside. So <laughs> and then the sight line's off. I should be looking up here. Hello. <laughs> it's my first time doing it from here. I should be a little... I should be like that, like on my tippy toes a little bit, but what are you going to do? Uh, I'm glad you're watching. Thank you very much. We talk about a lot of things on this show. I talk about my real life. Why? Because I was supposed to write a second memoir. Okay, that's why I talk about my real life, and I was going to actually FOIA request myself. What it's turning into now is it's turning into an interactive show with all of you. And you can participate in this show. You can work with me. Uh, we can come up with ideas. It says right in the uh, in the show description that this is for entertainment purposes only. So it's about it's about loud car o'clock. Everybody's got a loud car now. They they, they have uh, backfire cars, cars that backfire on purpose, and it sounds like uh, gunfire. Yeah, this is true. When I was working for a trucking company with pink boxes and balloons and teddy bears on them, and I never even pinched a curb, um, their trucks, they made the sound when you hit the brake as if you were squashing an animal. <laughs> you hear that? It's very similar to that. And that's what they sounded like. Their brakes with the air in them. The hydraulic brake it would sound like you were hurting somebody it would sound like either an animal or a, you know and this is by design this is what i'm trying to tell you there is not there's no way all the trucks could do that and it's really very disturbing i don't know why they do stuff like that they always blame the insurance companies whatever <laughs> yesterday i went for services and here comes another police officer <laughs> uh, trying to rattle me I'm not sure what your problem is, but I don't have any problems. I wrote a book, in case you don't know, I wrote a book called Two-Legged Animal. I was going to write a second memoir where, I, like I said, I was going to FOIA request myself to see what was out there. And uh, it was really kind of funny because they can't stop talking about dogs and water. I mean, everybody is talking about dogs and water. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why. I guess what I said about the hoot, the hound is pretty spot on there's no word for dog dog is god spelled backwards and god is the big four and ironically i'm not saying anything is by design i'm i'm finding coincidences and i'm forming an alternative hypothesis to those coincidences as well as working on a <laughs> uh, uh, not a sci-fi uh, a movie uh, uh but I'm working on the novelization for a television program. <laughs> so stupid. An on-demand series that, okay, that's a little bit more complex than say, yeah, uh, what what you're kind of used to. Like I heard that the the new Archies was cool, um, you know. And they gave that guy uh, I can never remember his name, Edward Burns. They gave him something that he he made about high school mine is about high school but it's not a, gonna take place in high school it, it takes place at the age of 17. okay it's a very important age for people and uh, especially for women and one of the characters is a female uh character a lead character and she uses her sexuality and sometimes it gets her in trouble because it's her early way of, of exerting, uh, exerting her dominance over somebody. And she's young, and so she doesn't know that. You know, uh, you know, she doesn't know that there's other ways. And she becomes this businesswoman. And when you're selling punk rock singles, 
and you're making three dollars off of each one and she's a cool person like she splits it with the band or whatever right uh you know she's running the label and she makes you know she sells a million singles and she makes a dollar fifty off each single and the band makes a dollar fifty that's 1.5 million dollars just like that and that's what happens in this series and i think you've seen this uh recently in something else um it's about gamestop and it seems to me like a lot of stuff comes out through media deep blue these news stories and they're in a rush to make a movie about it like uh, they're gonna just make a movie right about it but what we're making we're not making a movie we're making an entire series this is like breaking bad this is like the sopranos this is like something that you've never seen before okay why because it has more than just a couple of songs like daisy and the six <laughs> i have to use i have to use other shows as the litmus test what else are you gonna go by right and that's why that cop showed up yesterday i'm there for services because i'm altruistic i'm an honest guy I changed my life in the 04 era, right? People don't understand that. That's not my problem. <laughs> You're a moron. And they use tech, and you gotta be careful of this tech. Okay. There's cops there, he's like, so you were, you were at the beach then, right? And I'm like, well, yeah, when I first moved here, I slept in my car at the beach. So you were there then, right? I'm like, yeah, well, when I was at, oh, you were there then? <laughs> dude come on bro <laughs> just give it up guy give it up <laughs> whatever you're not gonna rattle me bro <laughs> like you can't rattle me look if i was gonna be rattled look at me man i'm living like a hobo i can't help it if i make it seem easy but let me tell you in real life it is not easy i work really hard to be mediocre <laughs> okay i work really hard to walk the middle path and i'm sorry that i yell but the traffic is really loud i don't know how you hear it but i thank you for watching it's really terrible when i fill up my coffee i fill up my coffee and i come walking out of the bathroom with like a brown cup of brown <laughs> a couple really nice cars here that's what's so great about california is the cars Two really old Mercedes Benz, uh, beautiful, beautiful black cars. No, I got One of them's a rag top. Uh, so I'm not going to show you stuff. I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. Um, I'm looking to have an actual produced show. I want a an actual produced show, and I, I really want to come in someplace and start working on this project. Uh, having a using the walls uh, like I said I rented an office at Premier offices and of course I was telling them about that you know again I get accosted on the street hey you need services I'm like yeah my name's Clifford oh like the dog uh, and then you know and then it's obvious that there's police officers there I mean it's just so obvious man I mean again and what's happening now again is they use gov workers and they use street urchins like i said i was just accosted by a street urchin right because of some things that i had to do for my book in las vegas that my wife knew all about they knew all about this but they also knew she also knew that they were going to get ready to use this tech on me and this tech is like being raped and that's why i don't have any respect uh for people who are working at a facebook who actually know about this tech sorry this is up on my screen sorry um right who know about this tech and they and, and you got people like zuckerberg saying yeah we want you to have an intimate relationship with your device and let me tell you something between the online free porn a lot of cats say i tell people to f off and i say all this crazy stuff i, I don't know you know it, it's just really sad that we allow these corporations to run roughshod over us 
and now all of a, all of a sudden these these um, these corporations are like, hey, you can dye your hair whatever color, you can become in pierced, it's okay, and they think that being their draconian re, uh, uh, measures are going to be okay now. Uh, you know, it's just really, come on, guys. Uh, there was some great memes yesterday. I tell you about the shows that I actually watch. I talk about um, people like Titus Frost. They're not on YouTube anymore. They're afraid to be on YouTube. But he does come on and do does a meme show. It's really funny. But I don't, you know, I'm not on social media. And I, I'm a better man because of it. I'll tell you that. I got off social media. Uh, like I said, you guys will have to go back and listen to some of my old episodes. I'm going to be taking down all my old episodes. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm going to be deleting them all. So I'm going to start all over again. And we always start with what? Linoleum blown apart. And what is it about? It's about... A punk rock band who becomes the biggest band in the world. And like I said, all of a sudden, now Roxy's not 17 when she makes the million dollars. But she makes a million dollars. Just like in the GameStop movie. I see aspects of my series in everything. I see it. It's just because it's so clear in my mind. Right? And it's going to be great when you guys see this. We're going to sell a ton of merch. People are going to be wearing the t-shirts, the hoodies. Whatever they wear. I don't know. You could see me. My favorite color is plain. Like, I just want, I don't want anything. I guess I'll have to change. Dude, it's your show. You better start wearing it. Is it my show? I don't know. I think it belongs to the, uh, the money people. What are you going to do? I'm trying to get people interested in this, and I'll be working on this forever. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, I'm not worried about anything. Um, yeah, so there were some pretty interesting memes, you know, and um, they were pretty funny. <laughs> Whatever, I, I kind of got lost on that. But I also listened to uh, Defango. I listened to Lift the Veil. Lift the Veil is in a mind melt. I could tell. He's, uh, we got to come up with a name for it. He's Elgo Affected or whatever it is. Uh, once you're targeted, you're targeted. And I think he caught it domestic. I'm just speculating. I don't know. It's easy to do. And if you're canceled like me, well, get up every day and, and do the best you can. Uh, that's what I've always done. <laughs> I'm not going to let Scuttlebutt and a bunch of phonies who run with fed rats define me as a person. You got no right doing it. And like I said, back in Detroit, I think it started with an ex-girlfriend having her mother show up. I think it started when they saw me on TV. I just moved to New York, and all of a sudden, I'm on TV. Okay? I was, I went from selling Amy Grant cassettes to actually working on an Amy Grant video down in Tribeca. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. It was in the BC era, guys. All I had was a pager. I wasn't going to call back my old friends. And I think this is a problem with Facebook. And in case you don't know, that algorithm that's ascribed to you is feeding you. Now, I had a former friend of mine. I keep talking about these people. Why? Because I thought they were we were friends. We are not friends. There is no more friendship. And it's just like Nicholas Pileggi said, either you're too stupid or you are in on it. Either way, you're out. <laughs> I don't have time for you, man. But that's why I talk about them on my show. And like Dr. Oblivion, I'm Osborne Strange, by the way. Right? That would be the character that I would develop. Um, just like Osborne Strange, Dr. Oblivion, you would have to come on my show in order to receive redemption. Right? And you're not going to get redemption through the big four. You might get it through the big bang. A little bang. Sorry, Sorry officer. Yeah, it was like an interrogation, bro. And I'm like, I'm here for services, man. I'll go through the system. I don't care. I told that to a guy I was working. I told you as, as a art handler. I told that to a guy there. I go, dude, get out of the truck. I go, we're backing up. Get out and clear traffic. What? What? <laughs> what? I said, get out of the truck and, and, and back me up. You're my driving partner. It's pathetic, man. That's why I would rather drive solo. I, 
Uh, yeah. These guys are a joke. And and then we got into it and I said, dude, I'll fucking, I go, I'll throw down and I'll, you know, catch a case and I'll go through the system. That's how the fuck I, wor I roll. The fuck out of here, man. Yeah, shit gets heated on the job. So what? If you can't shake hands and be like, and be professional at the end, then go fuck yourself. That's how I feel about it. I'm not here to make friends and I'm not here to make enemies. And I don't think anyone can wrap their mind around that. I think the stuff I talk about on my show is the most interesting stuff because I know that what I like, obviously, if I, there was a show similar to this one, I'd be watching it. I tell you about the shows I watch. Even Titus Frost calls Alex Stein a used car salesman. <laughs> That's what that show is. But guess what? Alex Stein is on YouTube and he's getting a lot of hits. My show is a non-political show. I don't care about what side of the aisle this or what side of the aisle that. I honestly don't. Because at a certain point, you got to walk away from that stuff and realize that it's really so arbitrary. There was a great meme. It was like, our rules for the, our laws for the government is the Constitution. It's on one page. Their laws for us. I told you there's 10,000 laws on the books. You don't know if you're breaking one. I listened to uh, Fresh Out the Box. I even listened to the female, Jessica Kent. She, she'll, they'll tell you, like, yeah, man, I had all these charges and only half of them were actually true. I didn't even do the other half. They just pack them on. I was just going to tack them on. That's what I'm saying. This is all arbitrary and it's all targeting. And they were trying to rattle my cage yesterday. So what? You can check my temperament through this device. You can check it. They can be checking it through this device. You see what I'm saying? They knew I was at the beach because they knew my cell phone. And I was being traced. So either he's a, a low-level guy from the people who weren't tracking and tracing me, or from those who were, or he, he was uh, somebody else who wasn't tracking and tracing me. They have all this information if they're allowing me to go down to my old neighborhood. And they thought I was going to die. They were setting me up. That's what they were doing. And I just laugh about it because I know the people who were involved. <laughs> uh, it's just like, and they couldn't believe that I left Detroit. And that's why that broad had to send her mother with a fucking police officer. This has been my whole life. I try to tell you, I was arrested in high school for marijuana. Like, look at, look at the way it is now. You know that this stuff is medicinal. And I had severe PTSD. You know what happened in 2021? I should have told them this one yesterday, though. I saw the guy uh, who was the neighborhood piece of trash. Yeah, I saw him. His nephew was a friend of mine. He's the one I wrote that song. Jimmy, where you think you're gonna go? Take a listen to it. It's under linoleum blown apart. And uh, I saw his uncle. He's a piece of trash. Now. His nephew, who I used to hang out with, Jimmy, sorry, he was displaying signs of trauma. He was a kleptomaniac, and he, uh, I don't know if he did anything sexual. I became more of a drug addict, sex addict, and he, I watched him do some pretty gnarly things when we were, when we were kids, and we we're talking about kids of about nine and 10. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. There was a gay kid in my neighborhood right and you know it's no big deal we everybody knew he was gay it was cool and uh we used to like play throw the football and we used to like want to pile right we used to like we used to call it dog pile or whatever and then uh we would get in the dog pile and uh and then you know like by the time you're 11 he's wanting a dog pile like but without the without the football you know what i mean you're just kind of like getting this and then that's when I went over to start hanging out with Robert Reban. And that's part of what Linoleum Blown Apart is, is that early part in high school. Um, and again, the kids are 17 and I'm talking about when I'm 11. And so when I'm 11, I go hang out with Dave Maroney and Robert Reban. Robert Reban, if he's still, if he's dead or whatever, he would be my brother because we came up in the same neighborhood. I'm not sure if you understand that. I'm not sure if any of these phonies 
these former friends of mine that I've named by name, you can sue me, you can do whatever you want. Understand that that would be my brother, not anybody else in Son of Sam. Because I was never in Son of Sam. I was just a fill-in musician. I had my own band and my own songs, and those are going into Linoleum Blown Apart. I don't have any brothers. Apparently, guys that I've known for 30 years try to set me up. They were guaranteed. They are so dumb. This is how dumb these guys are. This is part of the reason why I got away from them. Then I went out in the world and realized, well, I was fucking smarter than most people. <laughs> there you go. That's for you. Again, when I'm talking to my sister before she physically attacked me in 2021... Um, I'm telling her about what's going on now. I'm very selective when I, you know, even when I talk to you guys, I'm pretty selective. I don't really tell you everything, even though it sounds like I do. Um, obviously no major offenses or anything like that, but she's like, she's like a deer in the headlights. Like, just like this. That's why she physically attacked me. That's part of the reason because she couldn't grapple with the complexity of what I was talking about. And again, here I am, I keep my mouth shut, like a good little Zoolander, which started when I left New York in 1992 and they turned on their TV and saw me on MTV. That's not my problem, dude. <laughs> I was working my ass off and I did a lot of jobs. I don't know what you saw me and what you didn't. All right? So by the time I went to Las Vegas, I knew that I was going to write Two-Legged Animal. And so I got into a lot of perilous situations, but some of them I didn't really write, a, write about. So when I do the revised edition, I'll be adding all kinds of stuff. Right now, my stuff is up on Kindle Books, but I'm, I don't have any delusions of grandeur, you know. I'm not into this, you know, blowing smoke up people's asses and, you know, it's a big popularity contest and all this. I don't care. I've been off social media for two years and I'm a better man because of it. And that's how I developed. I should be back here. Sorry. That's how I developed Linoleum Blown Apart. And by the time Linoleum Blown Apart comes out, in about two years or two or more years all this Napoleon stuff is going to be kind of blown over and it's going to be on demand and people will be watching the series and all this stuff because it's going to be better than no offense it's going to be better than the one with Rod Steiger I never got a chance to finish that I never finished the five hour Napoleon uh, silent film from 1929 I it might be wrong it might be 1927 or 1929 I don't know I think it's 29 Oh, and by the way, I told you guys about uh, Wes Anderson. He has an extensive film knowledge. And he mentioned somebody, maybe uh, Desaldans. 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 Oh. Um, he, obviously in the French. And so he mentioned, uh, like, a lot of films from 1930. And so this is when... Walter's life is taking place. This is when Walter is the age of Linny, 17, 18. Now, do you see these parallels? I'm all about parallels, okay? I'm all about the mirroring of, of actors in this, characters, I mean to say. So, you have inside the film of reasonable service, you have an admiral character and he and Godwin, they go up to the North Pole and they're performing these tests, all kinds of tests on rockets. You know, they're getting stuck. Guys are dying. It's freezing cold. They have to try to get as close to the North Pole as they can to do these tests. And they have to see because as we all know, they say that Mars is really cold, right? So this is part of what they're doing. They have to test rockets in extreme temperatures. Meanwhile, in the fascist country, they're testing rockets. They don't have to test them in extreme temperatures because they're, they're gonna destroy cities. 
okay? But we don't know any of this. And when Godwin goes up there, uh, and all the names are subject to change, I don't really care. You can't really ch change uh, Lenny's. You can change everybody else's name, I don't care. I like Roxy. There was a chick named Roxanne. Uh, um, I don't want to think. Um, right? So you have the Admiral. Now, this is in the movie, his first movie. Who does he meet in real life when he's researching Scorpius XL? A man very similar. It's gonna be an older man and he's younger. Okay, that's the dynamic. The Admiral's older and he gives Godwin the pat on the back. What I never got. And it's important, guys. I don't, nobody seeks validation. We seek camaraderie. I keep telling you this, okay? We don't seek validation. Clicky, clicky, swipey, swipey, scrolly, scrolly, likey, likey. Oh, artificial validation. Somebody like my post. Right? We're seeking shared moments, okay? So when you start changing the nomenclature a little bit, when you start getting proactive and not being on the receptive end of all of this media deep blue, Huh. AI driven confirmation bias that you're being fed through your scroll. Now, again, it seems very innocent. Oh, I'm just I'm just checking some headlines. I'm just checking for headlines. I mean headlines. Take a look at Madonna. I saw four different articles about Madonna. They all said something different. So we're not, I told you about the schizophrenic future. This is what we're in. We are in the schizophrenic future, guys. We are in the schizophrenic future. And somebody over here is getting different information than somebody over here. And so when I meet up with this person right here, I don't mean to talk about Madonna, but hey, even Tarantino brought up Madonna, so give me a break. <laughs> when we start talking about Treat Williams or Madonna or something that happened in the news, right? Um, I like living here. Just, I love it. I really do. I, I really appreciate living here. I'm very grateful. Right? I want to thank the powers that be, <laughs> maybe some of the powers that shouldn't be. <laughs> For leaving me be, yeah, leave me be, well, yeah. So, when I'm talking to this gentleman right here, he says, hey, you see that headline about Hamana Hamana? Shmeebi, shmeebi. Okay, we're talking about the same headline, but he's getting alternative information. He's not getting the same information that I am, and we just looked at it on our, on our device within seconds of each other. How is this even possible, okay? This is what's happening. This is not being talked about. This is not being discussed. This is why you come to my show. This is why you share my show. This is why you give me a thumbs up. Oh, not there. Oh boy. Right. And like I said, uh, nobody's talking about the things that I talk about on my channel. I don't care. You want to call it shadow banned. I, I don't really care. <laughs> Whatever. What are you going to do? All these guys. Like I said, Titus Frost, Lift the Veil, Defango, they all go to alternative platforms. They're all on, I can't remember the name of them now. Go to Rockfin, go to whatever. Okay? And that's part of the shadow banning. That's part of it. Because then they would normally go and seek these things out. Okay? And so I was doing that in 2017 when all this crazy stuff started happening. And it was really scary. It was very scary. I mean, these, these police officers here, they're like, when's the last time you were in a behavioral health center? You know, all this stuff, and it's like, whoa, 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 right? And I'm like, oh, so you're gonna write that up in my, in my, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, we are. It's like, dude, I mean, I know these guys are cops. Like, what are you supposed to do? You know, I mean, I'm not here to do anything wrong. I'm not a criminal, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, so, 
And again, I'm not here to make friends and I'm not here to make enemies. I'm just here to, to be. And we talk about that. We talk about the docile and being there. You have thought, you have word, and you have deed. Ooh, hands. Getting handsy. Oh, Michigan. Always oh, interrupting my show. You're lucky it's not the fist. Ooh. Okay. So, this is the nuos, is your mind. The father. And the logos is the son. S-O-N. And you have thought, word, and deed. And then you have your being. The dot sign. Right? Martin Heidegger. Being there. And I like some of these uh, philosophical uh, things I listen to on YouTube. They're like, uh, we're going to have Heidegger without Heidegger. <laughs> right? Because Heidegger had a checkered past. And I don't think somebody's checkered past when everything around him is being ubiqu ubiquitous and you have to choose parties should affect you as a thinker and as a person. I mean, look at this cancel culture. It's out of control. It's out of hand. Right? Nobody has a right to, to, to cancel anybody, number one. Number two... Or, you know, with shadow banning. Number two, the, the LGBT movement wouldn't be where it's at if there was censorship. That's how it was able to grow. And now I talk about a lot of times um, Michael Mann, and I talk about, you know, I, I, you know he... Uh, something came up, uh, something uh, new that's coming out that he is associated with. And of course I'll see it, but I was really disappointed in Miami Vice because Vice is more than Vice. His Miami Vice episode, uh, film. I'm talking about the film. I'm talking about the film. I love the series, of course. Everybody loved it. Wesley Snipes had a role in it. You see all these small-time actors in there. It's really great to see these guys. Uh, you know, I don't watch sports, so I'm sorry I'm not rooting for, you know, whatever sports star. I'm into actors. That's what I'm into, and I'm into uh, musicians. It's as simple as that, and I think a lot of nerdy, geeky guys like me are into that. Uh, just not into sports, man. And so, when you have the Vice Squad, the Vice Squad is responsible for allegedly busting gambling operations and busting prostitution. Houses of ill repute, brothels. Now, you can see the timing of the closing of the brothels with uh, the growth of the porn industry. It's happening right at the same time. They're closing brothels, they're busting down these houses of ill repute, and all of a sudden, boom, by the, t by the 1970s comes around, now you've got porno theaters. And now you have what? You have actual relations going on inside the porno theater <laughs> right i mean this is kind of a created thing and the gambling where does the gambling go the gambling goes to corporations right and it's really great there's a great film it's called uh killing them softly it's a terrible title i always i, I love this film i really really truly do it's a great film and a great ensemble cast because simply because I know most of the people who are in, in, in the film and <clears throat> that's what they're talking about the late great Ray Liotta isn't it and that's what they're talking about okay uh, they're talking about corporate corporations and corporate guys taking over mob stuff and that's what they were talking about and they had a big game and that's, <clears throat> that's part of, like, they're running an illegal gambling operation. Now, that would have been great for Miami Vice. That would have been really great. There is a great scene in Miami Vice by Michael Mann that they do go to Cuba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I get off. I go off on this stuff. I go off on stuff that I love, that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about the movies, right? 
but I can also take a step back. I take uh, my foot off the gas pedal and I can see around me. I can see around my vehicle because I'm a professional driver. And I can see, whoa, 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 I was in a little bit of a bind here. Let me take a step back. So you have Wes Anderson and he's into this, this all down, this director, right? I knew about, he mentioned like eight directors and eight films and I knew about three of them. You know, I mean, like that's how extensive his knowledge is. He's great. You know, and again, I talk about these people and I try to, I'm, you know, I'll be goofy and I'll be a little bit critical, but it's just because you're critical, critical about what you love, right? I think uh, they said Tarantino might be doing a movie about a film critic or a critic or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Spreading rumors on your show, are you? Huh? So, right? I'm just going to say something. Please stand by. So, oh, I love that. It's it's instant espresso, but man, I, I fire off on all cylinders with that stuff. Ugh. Okay. So, we can see this possible atomic future, this thing happening with the two films, Oppenheimer. I talk about Christopher Nolan. I was really inspired by Interstellar. And I was thinking of We Are Martian around that time. Like I said, I can take any of these narratives. I swear to God, I'm gonna do a show just like this where I'm talking like really, like I'm talking to a person, I'll be like. I can take any of these narratives and I can marry them together. And I think that's really kind of more interesting. And I wanna do these short stories and stuff, but it's looking like I'm going to go through the system if these guys weren't LARPing me. I mean, it's just like you just don't know. And that's what's annoying about it. When you go in for s services and you talk to somebody, you know, you expect to get a, you know, like an, like a, you expect somebody to be genuine. Not, not this phony stuff. You know, come on, dude. So, anyways, so that's what I'm a little bit worried about. And I talk about the recurrence, and I've talked about this before, and I'm talking about the fact that we have a Kennedy in office, we have problems with Russia, and we have these films coming out about an atomic explosion. Okay? And so it's a little trouble, right? And we really can't predict the future. We don't know. But I do try to make predictions on this show. And I can make predictions about things in Hollywood Babylon. I talk about Hollywood Babylon a lot. Uh, don't forget that Kenneth Anger is still alive and well right here in Heavenly Bills, California. Okay, he's still alive. Kenneth Anger has ties to Bobby Beausoleil who has ties to the Manson family. Okay, uh, Kenneth Anger was a prolific um, filmmaker who, who influenced Martin Scorsese who everybody loves, everybody adores Scorsese now. Uh, well, now, I mean, they, they always have, but you know what I mean? Um, I'm a Paul Schrader man, and I, and I love these little connections like that. I just do. Uh, I am completely influenced by cinema. And so I was talking about parallels, and thank you for staying with me. <laughs> so you have the character in the film, The Admiral, with Godwin. Now we have... Walter, who's come through of reasonable service, pork chops in the Who's Gow, where the guy gets a bad pork chop. It's actually based on my life. And he realized that that means he's going to die. And he just takes revenge, and it, it's the end of his innocence. And that's why men like this film. They're like, oh my God, you know, this, this kid was great. He was going to be a great boxer. And the, he goes out in the world and he finds it's corrupt. That's me. That's my story. Yeah, you participate in the corruption. Of course. I participated in the corruption. Yes. You do. And then he does two films with Jeremy Cloud. And, like, you know, Jeremy Cloud comes in. They do these two films. And now Jeremy Cloud is doing entheogens. He's doing mushrooms. And he's tapping into what? The Eggieverse. 
he knows all about Buddhism. He knows all about this stuff. And when they make Nana Sticky Candy Dish, whether Jeremy Cloud knows it or not, whether he tapped into something from the great beyond, we don't know. And that's what's going to be great about it. And when that comes out, the very VIP, very important family is going to be pissed. Okay? It's just like Citizen Kane. When, when he was saying Rosebud, that's what William Randolph Hearst called his girlfriends. Right? That's what that was. And you, that movie came out, hey, whatever year it came out, 40s. And he's talking about Rosebud. That's what he called her flower. <laughs> her female flower. Oh, yeah. So this is where we're going with this, guys. Okay, this isn't some childish stuff. I'm 57 years old. I've been around a lot, and I kept my trap shut. Right? I kept my mouth shut. I just sat there. And I took it. I sat there and I took it. How's that look? Is it better? It looks like I'm looking up. Sorry. Right? People were goofing on me. Oh well. So you goof on me. So what? Okay, I'm Zoolander. Okay, whatever. And I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And eventually I built up this body of work. And this body of work is going into Linoleum Blown Apart. And it's the best uh, idea for a series ever. And it is a series. This isn't a film. This is a series. And that's how it's going to be woven together. And I keep talking about this. So, I'm sorry. I was talking about... Right? So, so Walter comes out of Jeremy Cloud's world in about... Uh, what is it? The film comes out in 1963. So it's about... It's going into the 1960s. And so... Now, Walter is going to have a relationship with this professor who is like Heidegger, right? It has nothing to do with fascism or anything like that. That's something totally different. He's an American professor. He's a thinker. Uh, he's a sci-fi guy, okay? And so, so Walter is coming out of this world with Jeremy Cloud of entheogens and like you know like smoking left-handed cigarettes as they called them this jazz life this syncopated life right it's syncopation it's um it's cubist art abstract art where you're becoming part of it you guys under you guys are grasping this when you're listening to a syncopated rhythm now people don't understand that uh keith richards plays in a syncopated rhythm as a blues guitar player, okay? And again, I talk about the Rolling Stones versus Led Zeppelin. They're two different groups. They did two different things. I consider what uh, Jimmy Page did to, to be more alchemical, to tr more of a transformation. That's what he was all about. He was about Aleister Crowley and this alchemical transformation. And that's reflected in his music. But you have... Keith Richards, Keith, with an F. And he's playing in a syncopated rhythm, just like a lot of jazz guys were doing. And this is the cool jazz that's coming into the scene. You know, they come in hot, and then by the night, yeah, they're going in the 1950s into the 60s. Well, here comes the cool jazz, the syncopated, ryth syncopated rhythm, right? And that you're, it's an immersive, it's heady and so here comes walter along with that everything's going to reflect that i talk about production design you know this is going to be like alejandro jodorowsky's version of dune guys this is what we're talking about but it's not about these sci-fi characters it, each film is different each film is going to have its production design Walter's going to have their production design. The punk rock kids are going to be kind of like these, like Juno. And I'm sorry, I keep saying Diablo Cody. I meant to say, like, the Reitman kid she works with. You know, Reitman's kid. That's the kid. I mean, he he, he probably used teenage uh, 
band club. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of music that I listen to, right? And I talk a lot about projection. You might see me walking down the street and you're gonna project whatever you see me as onto me, right? And I think this is part of the culture of saying, how do you identify? I would be a maroon fetishist. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you. That's how I identify. That's what they're trying to tell you. That's what they're trying to introduce. So it's not so much, you know, I mean, these, these bureaucrats, they're trying to be, that's what they're trying to in introduce. Uh, I was doing some paperwork again, like I said, I'm trying to go through the system. I'm not looking for a handout, I'm looking for a hand up, okay? And and that's that's what they they're trying to do because they're trying to make government and man more ubiquitous. That's what they're doing, and and human. I meant to say, man means hands. Don't forget hands. They're trying to just make it more you know, melted together. So, again, if I was going to identify, I would be a maroon fetishist. A fetishist would be the sexuality, you know, and my background as a human being type thingy <laughs> would be a maroon. Uh, and I think I can, this is justifiable. <laughs> Everyone's seeking justice now. Ooh. Uh, I think it's justifiable through 23andMe, okay? Through 23andMe, it's showing that there are four parts to my Southern African roots, and there are, <laughs> I don't know, I think there's eight parts? Well, maybe not that much. All right, you know, there's, yeah, yeah, seven parts to my Northern European roots. You're talking about Ireland. You're talking about France. You're talking about uh, North uh, Britain. You're talking about Asia. You're talking about Plains Indian as well. Plains American Indian. There's no reason that people on the East Coast would be part Plains Indian. But Plains Indian is kind of what they were looking for when uh, I was signed up to Don Buckwald's ag agency. I never booked anything. I was out there booking things on my own. And I was being represented by Ricky Olshan. She got a lot of people a lot of work, including Irene Bedard. You can see her name, you can look her up. She was Pocahontas in the cartoon for Disney. Okay, uh, she's worked tons and she was great. She did, I think she, we did a play together. Okay, so I, I don't think that's on my resume, damn it. I don't know if it's on there. I mean, I don't really care. Fucking resume is a resume. I don't give a shit. But again, I wanted to keep all my call sheets. I wanted to keep all that stuff. All that stuff's gone forever. You understand? You understand? I should have been a dad. Oh, had a dad. He was big and strong. I turned around and found my daddy gone. That's a Jane's addiction that I knew. I saw Jane's Addiction numerous times. I worked on one of their music videos. I just basically had to set up the intervalometer camera. I was, like I said, I worked in the camera department. I just watched this thing on Christopher Nolan. He shot on Kodak film and he, they were using, I said 32 millimeter before it's uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, he, they were using uh, Panavision cameras, Panavision cameras and Kodak film. I did uh, checkouts at Panavision and uh, camera service center who had all the Airflex. And I've, uh, I've had to change rolls in the bag. And what you want to do is not oil the film. Very scary. You can't see what's going on. But again, it's just like anything. The more you do it, just like my show, <laughs> me. You know, the better you get at it. Right? Just like anything. So that's why I said, I'll smack talk people who, who I've known for 30 years and people who actually think that they know me who've been smack talking me like whiskey dick dan he's dead now if you're if you're an atheist you're an academic atheist you're like that's my model 
I love that model. It's my favorite model. It makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your model makes the most sense to you. Good. Good for you. So why can't I smack talk the dead? They were just... They, there's nothing about them anymore. They're gone. They're dead. Would, you, would, a, would an academic atheist get PO'd about that? I think they would. I think that they would get more PO'd about it than somebody who actually believes in a hereafter. We'll just call it a hereafter. I think they would. I think they would get mad because they're, they've lost this ability to actually have this creative mind, to have this peace of mind. And I think it's okay if you even float the notion that, yes, man created God in a way, right? And I think with Nietzsche's, uh, you know, the whole God is dead thing, he's saying, like, what is life going to be like when we get rid of these religions? And again, just like the Holy King, well, just like any, any a lot of religions and a lot of writings, you're going to see... Um, conflicting views as a, as a writer and a thinker Nietzsche had some conflicting views uh, you know people have done these evaluations and again I'm very sorry I'm not gonna I don't sit here and pretend to be a scholar I'm talking about my project uh, which is called Linoleum Blown Apart and you'll see with people like Nietzsche that he will change oh my god I finally got through I finally got through that that Ross McDonald. I don't know if you can hear that. Sounds like the Misfits. Maybe it is. He's rocking it. He's rocking it up. So I finally got through that Ross McDonald. Oh, okay. The book come, came out in like 1950s. And, you know, he's, he's been writing since the 1930s. And it was about the long game. It was about generational wealth. There was a character named Gordon, and he talked about Detroit. <laughs> Am I going around saying, I was meant to find that. Look, it has meaning. No. We're very practical when it comes to these parallels and to these synchronicities. You know, I was like thinking the other day, like, you're... you're what is it? LDE? Little D energy? <laughs> um, I wouldn't want something that loud. <laughs> I I'm a luxury man, uh, you know. Uh, I'll take a Cadillac, Chrysler 300, <laughs> something that rides smooth. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not some youngster. <laughs> Whip a snapper. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I was going somewhat great too. <laughs> Okay, so we are willing this in to existence. We're going to create this television series, um, and it is about punk rock. But you have to have the characters fixated on something. They're not going to be like, oh, I worship Susie from Susie and the Banshees, you know, and then, you know, again, that's kind of like on this... I, and I let I love um, what's his name David Boyle I can't remember his name uh, Boyle Danny Boyle you know I love all that stuff train spotting guys this is right up that alley this Danny Boyle uh, sex pistols thing right but guys you have to under guys you gotta understand guys uh, you have to understand you can't have that small limited scope now don't ever forget we're shooting seven films we're going to shoot them simultaneously then you're going to shoot those while the band rehearses the band can go on tour they can go play coachella nobody's going to know who they are whether or not you want to use their real name it would be fun to actually use them their real name hey we're a linoleum blown apart like hey, whatever then they're playing small stages, right? Because I went by the Troubadour. They got little flyers up still, and it's like, nobody knows who these people are. They're hoping to build their name. 
And there you go. You got the band all ready to go. You send them out on tour. We're linoleum blown apart. And then a year later, people are going to turn on their TV. I guess they're going to put on their device. It's tough doing this show, no water. They're going to put on their device and they're going to see Linoleum Blown Apart. Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, didn't those guys play at, at, at a bar in our neighborhood? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they sure did. And they can, we can get, obviously, um, you know, um, GoPro footage of that. We can get GoPro footage. You can get, you know, um, we can do a tie-in. I'm all about tie-ins, guys. I'm all about tie-ins. And by the way, I got a great idea for, for somebody who I really like, but I'm not going to mention their name on here. Um, I mentioned too many people and too many weird things happened to them. I had... Um, you know, I talk about Colonel Kurtz's program. Sure, one of her animals was murdered right around the time where I was talking about animals being murdered. See, this is the kind of creepy stuff that these guys are doing right now. And they're doing on-the-ground ops coupled with what you do right here on the Internet. They're attacking YouTube channels. They're coming after people like me. It's like, why don't you go fucking, uh, uh, I don't know. Go after somebody else. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a millionaire. And, and this is the ridiculousness that's in everybody's mind. Oh, get on Instagram. You'll be Instagram famous. Nobody... What? Do you know what it takes to have a viral video? And I'm telling you right now, the game is rigged. And it's still rigged. It's always been rigged. Uh... Who's the guy? Jack Kerouac? He's from the peerage. If he's not from the peerage, he's from the gentry. Okay? So his family goes back. And what's really interesting is that he he wrote on a scroll, right? Scrolly scroll. And that goes back in history, too, as well. In addition. Right? There were certain places that started writing on papyrus, the, and everybody writes in notebooks, but he wrote on a scroll. And it would be interesting to know whether or not his family goes back to that, that far, you know? I don't know, right? We don't know, okay? So these are the kind of interesting things that I like to talk about. And it's funny because everybody says, oh, you should be like the Christ, you should be like Jesus, right? Be like the Christ. And good, I, I hope you are, I hope you do, right? I mean, the good things, I guess. I, yeah, I'd be like the Christ hanging out with the, you know, not his mother Mary, but, you know, right? But how about we be like Moses? How about that? How about we be more Moses-like? You ever think about that? To be more like Moses? Instead of being like the Christ? Don't forget, it was mainly... Greeks going over to Egypt. The mystery schools were closed. Right? There's a limited amount of people. You have Ptolemy, which is a Pta Al May. So it's the marriage of the Egyptian god with El. Al, Allah, Elohim, and Alchemy. Okay? And mostly it was the Greeks going over there. Christianity started in Greece, guys. So if you're going to be more like anybody, be more like Moses. Come up with a credo. And that's what he did. Here we go. I think we got, we got a major LARPer here. They're, they're fake. They talk about dogs, they talk about water, and they talk about ice. That's what they talk about with me. It's always... So 
applies the same thing. And again, could be a coincidence. Oh well, it's coincidence. And that's that's part of this targeting culture. Okay, there is no doubt. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not going to get into current events or anything like that. That's why I'm taking the entirety of my life. And in case you don't know, I spent time out on the streets. I put my life at risk, and nobody has any uh, 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 idea what I did for my book. I did a lot for my book. And some of it didn't even go in because how can it? Now I'm transferring a lot of stuff from my life into fiction. Okay? I, I, I never really liked reading fictional books. I wanted to write something like On the Road. Everybody was into that. I told you I met Francis Ford Coppola. My headshot, excuse me, will be, will be in his archive. And when I put this information out there, it really just scares me because someone could break in there and just take it. It's like, Gordon's delusional. You know, I mean, that's the importance of friends and family. That's why I was talking about my sister, Leona. You have no business staring like a, like a, a deer in the headlights. You have no business staring like a deer in the headlights when I'm telling you about something that's really important to me. You know what I would do? Hey, let's get together. Let's put a plan of action together. What can I do, Gordon? How can I help you? I'm your brother. I'm your sibling. How can I help you? What can we do about this, Gordon? That's what I would do, and that's what a lot of guys do. <laughs> I, or male energy, or alpha, or whatever, however you want to phrase it. But when you're beta, and you're afraid, and again, these things vacillate. Nobody is just like an alpha all the time. This, this is a lie. Oh, he's an alpha personality. He's a type this personality, type that. Guys, if you're not neurotic and you marry somebody who's more maybe stoic, you might become a little bit more neurotic, meaning you're, you might be a stickler for the details a little bit more than what you would be in a different relationship with a different person. And you can see people like Chelsea Handler kind of pushing this notion to just be a serial dater because why? You have this online culture. You can go on to Hinge or whatever it is and you can go get a date, go have sex, and then you never have to see the person again, okay? And it's interesting. I think uh, in some of these books, uh, like Brave New World, like the doors of perception and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think they talk about stuff like that. Brave New World. Just having anonymous sex or some, some, pe some people not having sex at all. Okay? And again, I think you're, you're responsible for your own family. That's why, uh, you know, like with my family, it's like I was out a long time ago. Okay? And when I didn't have any problem going to jail in Michigan, I wanted to see what was going on. I wanted to kind of see. That's why I said I was unafraid to go to jail. But then I realized what they were doing. It was set up after set up after set up after set up. And then here it comes after a seven year marriage. They're setting me up, but they're, they're cheated. They used the algorithms. And they thought for sure they could get me to actually hurt somebody. This is what they wanted to do. They meaning those involved. And they meaning people who pass the hat. So you never know who it is. And they meaning these fed rats who are associated with Facebook and IG. I am telling you <laughs> beyond a shadow of a doubt what happened with Elon Musk at Twitter. That's why he made it open source. He goes, I tweaked the algorithm. Do you think they're going to come out and tell you that they're weaponized this stuff? Police officers know it because they actually have the weapon. I told you, I was on the 7 train. Police officers get on the 7 train. It's elevated so everybody's on their device. They get on there and boom. Uh, you, all of a sudden, your service is cut. You're done. And they can cinder fella affect you, meaning that all of a sudden you're scrolling and something really kind of maybe horrific comes up. 
I'm not kidding. That's how they roll. That's how dangerous this stuff is. And I told you before, in the uncanny valley, when something happens that's shocking and unexpected, in that moment, a predator can come in and prey on you. And they can induce things just like these guys yesterday trying to get me to say that I was somewhere. Yeah, of course you, I could say that I was somewhere. Number one, my car has GPS, so you knew where I was. Number two, my phone was intact, so you knew where I was then. But again, the game is rigged. They'll be like, well, it's going to take us, uh, you know, 13 months to get that information. Sorry. Okay. In the digital age, this is the whole joke and lie that is our government. They should be able to do things instantaneously. When another president was in office, they put $2,000 into my bank account. One day I had $2,000 in my bank account and I never gave the president of the United States my bank account information. Nobody's talking about this. I'm talking about things that nobody else is talking about on my show. That's why you come here. That's why you should share my show. If it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Nathan from Lift the Veil is in the middle of a mind melt, and I'm not going to some other platform. I was scared to death. I was scared for my life uh, in 2018. What happened to me down in Florida was unconscionable. Here they come. Can you imagine driving that thing all day? Do you guys hear that? Oh, man. I'd be so annoyed by that. Uh, but I talk about my real life. I talk about current events. I talk about the weaponization of these algorithms. There was a woman in the news, or she's a news reporter, whatever they are, talking head on a newscast. And she said she was afraid to leave her house because outside was filled with Trump supporters. This came up in Media Deep Blue meme. It's supposed to be a news re news headline. What did I tell you? A former friend of mine, he said the exact same thing. The exact same thing. So this is people's algorithm, as I said, sending them news and information. And it is their device, more than likely, through the social media site attacking their nervous system and nobody's talking about this because if they can weaponize uh, the uh, NYPD they have these weapons so they obviously have them everywhere if they can weaponize um, their device to attack your central nervous system well what do you think is happening through this social media site that's why people are getting in a tizzy about these stories that are that are being fed to you through media deep blue you're getting emotionally involved in a in a story that you don't even know the the people that exist or what's worse is you're becoming a sociopath you're becoming a sociopath with regard to people actually dying and being crushed underwater. You're like, hey, yay, hey, let's make memes about it. Really? Is that so healthy as well? And the fact that nobody is actually addressing the issue? Like I said, I mostly watch a comedy podcast. And so they're all like, hey, yay. Hey, hey. Anything that's media deep blue, they believe anything. Nobody's questioning anything. Oh, well, I was looking at Crypto Casey. She was actually talking about a lot of things that James Corbett and people who are were kicked off of YouTube in 2017 for whatever reason. She's kind of talking about that stuff now. There's still a couple people. I, I'm seeing, like I said, I'm seeing that swendulum. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing the pendulum swing back a little bit, okay? Uh, and, and we're starting to, to see these channels open up a little bit more. 
because a lot of times, like I said, it takes time for things to grow. And me being in the punk rock scene proves it. Where I was in the punk rock scene and I was in, you know, the early like rap scene or whatever. And, right? Now all of a sudden what? Uh, by the time, okay, so I, I can tell you about my own personal timeline. So it's 1982. Most of the bands I loved were from the 70s. Uh, you know, I missed so much. I was like, oh, but I was a kid. <laughs> so I'm 16, just like the guys in uh, Linoleum Blown Apart. And by the time I'm 26, 10 years, everybody has a Misfits shirt on now. Uh, Metallica are wearing Misfits shirts. And that was because, I think that was because of their bass player who ended up dying, Cliff. Right? Um, right? So, it was kind of over by then. Like I said, uh, whatever that was. That was after Samhain. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Danzig was already on uh, American Records, working with Rick Rubin. He didn't even know who Rick Rubin was. I knew who he was. Because I worked in a record shop. And I have this rich education in music and I have this rich education in, in sound design that's really important and I'm and I, and I needed to get away from I'm talking about you know 1992 Detroit I needed to get away from these people and I'm so glad that I did I'm so glad that I did it really changed my life and I made a mistake, and I made, you know, many mistakes after that. But again, it's not for me to decide. It's for you guys to support me, get the word out. Please, please share my show. Please like it. Don't you know? 